Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, today, Heidi, we're going to talk about a um, topic that's dear to my heart, and that's helping the police families who have had a loss. And, and uh, my dad was a policeman. He was chief of police in my small town. And he was also an MP in the Navy, and he was United States Marshal of Utah while I was growing up. So the police have been very near and dear to my heart and all the wonderful work they do to protect us. And there's a great organization that has been started to help police families. Do you want to tell us about that? And our guest sure. is going to be representing them today. Yes, we are going to talk with Dennis Jones, who is the executive director of COPS. And COPS stands for Concerns of Police Survivors. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk to him more about supporting cops and their families, Mom. Good. Uh, hey, Dennis. Go Hello. Ahead. How are you? How you doing? Great to have you on the show. Now, you've been a police officer, right? Tell us about that. Yes. Well, I, I was a police officer in the, the NYPD for 25 years. Wow. Uh, worked all over the city and retired in 2009. All right. That's amazing. Thank you for your service, by the way. Thank Absolutely. You. Now, you probably uh, saw uh, fellow officers and friends who died in the service. Yes. Yes, yeah, so, uh, tragedies that have struck us. Uh, I know when I retired, there was uh, at least 25 officers that were killed in the line of duty during the time that I served. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, of course, the 9-11 officers, and then uh, prior to that and that, and a little after. Mm -hmm. And what was your thought? What kind of support did you feel that they need to do? Because you've kind of gone into the co uh, COPS organization, right? Well, I know that there was never any support for the officers, but um, as far as the families are concerned, mm -hmm. you always felt and always wanted to believe that they were getting as much help as possible. Um, the one thing that the police department always says is that we'll never forget. And we tell that to the families and we hope that they feel uh, that sincerity behind it because we want to back it up and this organization uh, the concerns of police survivors we do so we back that up and we make sure that we're with these families forever that's amazing that's a beautiful gift because it is our biggest fear when we have a loss and when my brother died it was my biggest fear that he would be forgotten yes so the fact that you're telling them look we're never gonna forget and we're also gonna stay with you forever and I was just wondering, you mentioned 9-11, and we are here in New York City. How many police officers died on 9-11? Well, in the NYPD, we lost 23 police officers. There was a, a, a number of officers lost from uh, the Port Authority also. Mm -hmm. And then we had officers that were lost in Nassau and Suffolk. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing that, that's still happening now is that we're losing officers con consistently mm -hmm. from the effects of 9-11. Mm. So that it's really a, yes. a problem. Yes, in fact, I read something about an officer <coughs> that just, he died on September 11th, 2011, mm. because he was down working at the site and he ended up getting cancer. But the weird part was he died 10 years later on the same day, September 11th. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're starting to see those, those health it, There's an, you know, uh, been an absorbent number yeah. of officers that have passed since 9-11 from the effects of 9-11. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting um, because it's so long. I mean, I have a, a friend whose um, husband was killed in, a, a, he was killed at a drugstore shooting, you know, and uh, he was a police officer in California. And it was my very best friend from high school's uh, husband who was killed, left two kids. Now, fast forward, it's been, uh, I think, about 35 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the police in that area just honored him. I don't know, it was some kind of a anniversary or whatever, mm -hmm. and brought the whole family in. And the kids are you know, grown up now and all that kind of thing. But I'll have to say, if you look at the whole span, there were a lot of times when they were kind of you know, on their own right. going through that process. So I really like your organization. And I know that one of the things that um, I heard, uh, heard in looking at some of your material is that you support people going to court. Yes. Because I don't think people realize that uh, for this family, they went to court many times, the son, to, uh, to parole hearings. Right. And they're still doing it, aren't they? Yes. yes. Even though it's been 30 years. Well, actually, mm -hmm. unfortunately, they were upset because he was just let was out of released. jail because it was California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to, you know, open the prisons and it, it's been all these years but that was part of the reason the police came to them again right. and supported them again because they you know, know how they felt yeah. so i yeah. guess that's part of what you what your organization does too. yes we do we make sure that we're out there uh 
during these, these trials, which mm -hmm. is probably the, the most intense part because they have to sit through and hear all of the documentation relative to the death, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, through the parole hearings as they come up. Mm -hmm. um, recently in, in New York, we've had a lot of cases where the, the uh, perpetrator was not given parole. Mm -hmm. His uh, life imprisonment without a chance of parole. So that kind of eases it up for the families Except a little bit. Except with this, yeah. he did get parole in, exactly. the, in the end. You know, so it makes it difficult. <coughs> so you're there Never. when this, it hurts. It, yeah, constantly. There's always a, something that'll trigger that hurt, that'll trigger that grief coming back. So we're, we're, we're aware of it because, of course, our organization is made up of spouses, children, grandparents, parents, you know, siblings. And then uh, so we're able to pair the families together. We're mm -hmm. able to pair of someone who's had a death five or ten years ago to someone that's this is a new case and, and deal with each family level. Because oh, as like you know, that. once there's one a death, you know, there's a rippling effect that mm -hmm. goes on because it, 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 it attaches itself to every single family mm -hmm. member, every single friend. Yeah every single person in their lives, mm -hmm. you know, and of course and, the co-workers. And not everyone wants to get involved. I know with my mm -hmm. friend's family, the son is very involved, but the daughter doesn't want to be involved at all. So, right. you know, they've got these people who are kind of on their own doing these things. And you have that in families, but, you know, at some point in time that might just happen. We, you know, we have people grieving after 40 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're able to maybe get in and talk to them and try to bring them some sort of closure. I, I like that. And, you know, I worked at the FDNY for 10 years after 9-11 and the thing that people would say from the outside was well you know they had firefighters didn't they eventually expect them to die it's a dangerous job and I said no you know even though you are a police officer or a firefighter you just you know they've been trained well and you just don't expect somebody to die on the job even though there is some risk and I imagine these families didn't expect their loved ones to die. And they always believe that they're going to come home, mm -hmm. and they always expect them to come home. And, and the, the officers, they believe the same. Mm -hmm. And when that tragedy strikes, it's it's always a shock to everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would think that the police would <coughs> love the fact that you're doing this for the families. So it, do you get good support? We get them? great support from our police departments in, in the area. And, it, and this is the Metro New York chapter. so. We just launched this chapter two, about a little over two years ago in 2012, and uh, we have some of the biggest departments in the country that are existing here, the NYPD, of course, and Nassau and Suffolk County. Right, so. right. I, I love the volunteer idea because mm -hmm. uh, it's so great to support our police yes. by having volunteers to continue mm -hmm. because they can't. You know, go in and help. You know, every single family member forever, and, and you're sitting there. Uh, you know, being able to help them. Wonderful organization. Now, how did who got inspired to start it here? Well, and it's the national office it's a national, in Ohio yeah, it's or something. A, it's isn't a, it? a national organization, mm -hmm. and um, it was uh, started by like-minded women, widows, um, in two, in uh, 1984. So it's about 30 years old now, and. Um, we started the Metro New York chapter here in New York in 2012. And of course, uh, New York State is the third highest in deaths, in police mm. deaths. And about how and, many are there a year? Uh, on an average across the country, there's approximately about 140 to 160 police officers mm -hmm. killed in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you have camps. Yes, we Talk have camps. Talk a little bit about that. We have camps that uh, are, again, situated for each level or each situation. We have uh, kids, young and, and older kids. Uh, we have spousal camps. We have the parent, grandparents and all the extended families, uh, si siblings, and then also co-workers camp. Oh. So um, we try to get the police officers to come out and, and, and you know, because they go through the same scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, they're grieving just as anybody else, but they have to go back to work. Right. And they have to go back to work immediately. Right. So. We run these camps so that we can help them out also. That's awesome. Oh, that. Well, we're going to show a roll-in of your organization, mm -hmm. and then we thought that uh, we would have our, our friends come on from the Compassionate Friends and talk a little bit about that, because they've seen grief, uh, um, people from mili the they They've got people in their chapter that have had losses, yeah. and they also have some personal experience losing people that in the line of duty. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they want to talk to you a little bit about it. Sure. In 1984, a few visionaries, armed with little more than caring hearts, creative minds, and an iron will to meet important needs unfulfilled, started Concerns of Police Survivors. That first year, 
COPS had 110 members. Today, that number stands at over 15,000 families. The spouses, children, parents, siblings, in-laws, fiancés, significant others, and affected co-workers of officers killed in the line of duty. For 25 years, Concerns of Police Survivors has been the only organization offering unique, multifaceted, hands-on programs to these survivors, helping to rebuild their shattered lives. Each group has a program designed especially for them, and they are surrounded by others who have experienced a similar loss and are dealing with, or have already dealt with, many of the same issues. All these programs allow time to socialize and build friendships. There is time for counseling, both in group or individual if requested. And each retreat has an outdoor recreational element to relax the mind, challenge the body, and lift the spirit. And the children survivors have their own place, cops, kids, camp, and outward bound. The services provided don't end there. There are scholarships for education, support during trial and at parole hearings, and training the regional and state COPS chapters who work on the local level with survivors and the law enforcement community. We know unfortunately that each year on average another 140 to 160 law enforcement officers will lose their lives in the line of duty. Their families will join the ranks of the survivors and become part of the growing numbers of the COPS family. Well we wanted to introduce you now to Michelle and Babe Miro and Michelle and Babe, the reason we wanted to have them on the show was because they run a chapter of the Compassionate Friends, and I know that they have dealt with the police families and that kind of thing. So I want to talk about community, because I think that we all grieve in community, and I wondered, what have you seen in your community, Babe? I know you've had police officers, friends that have died. I've had a friend of mine who was, uh, 1972, who was killed mm -hmm. on a job. Uh, we've also had couple come to our group that was the uh, police officers, mm -hmm. parents, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so. <laughs> what do you see differently as far as having somebody cl killed in the line of duty as far as just a death? Do you have uh, any thoughts about that? Uh, I, I'm thinking of the murder piece. <coughs> because, I, I mean, you guys yeah. can probably speak to this, but I'm thinking, okay, so if, I've, if you're a police officer and you've been killed in the line of duty, oftentimes you've been murdered. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's different than if you, let's say, die of a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. so. well, Absolutely. What, what I think is very important about his organization, different than the Compassionate Friends, mm -hmm. I know when we sit around in a group and we hear somebody else lost their child the same as our child died, we, we, there's something about holding that person's hand. Mm -hmm. who, even though we're all alike, we're all different. And when we could reach across and we just know, we feel a kinship to each other when we have a similar loss. So that's what's so great about your organization where they, they all kind of died the same yes. way. Mm -hmm. Same family. Now, do mm -hmm. people look at it as murder that when, they've had, when they've had been shot in the line of duty? Oh, yes, and, and it's treated that way in the court system. Mm -hmm. So you have, you have to get over that initial shock and then that initial anger. So there's a lot of anger that goes on during trial. And that could possibly be almost a year to two years later. So even in the process, we're, we're trying to really work with the family. You still have to bring them back and get them through that trial, that trial time. And then all the officers also, because they play a, a big role in the, police, in the trial. And, and you're really right. bringing up a whole lot more of that, those memories that you're probably not ready to, to deal with at that point. Yeah. You know, um, I was thinking about... Um, as far as the murder piece goes, mm -hmm. I know that 9-11, uh, mm -hmm. the families that you worked with were very upset if it wasn't called that, right? Well, yeah, it was interesting because when I first went in to work with the, the families of firefighters, um, they lost firefighters, I would go in and say, when, you're, when your loved one died, when okay. your husband died or your child died, you know, and they kept saying, Heidi, stop saying that. They were murdered. And I think I was having a hard time using that word because it was, it's so shocking. But, you know, they said, that's, you've got to understand that's where we are in our heads because there's a lot that goes with that. We're really angry, you know, we're, ma we're mad at the people that did it. 
and you know they're gone so we can't get any justice and you know there was a lot of stuff that went along with the idea that they well they were murdered right. as you're saying I mean it's a it's a whole different thing and it brings a, up a lot of feelings yeah and I know with, with so. the compassionate friends when somebody is murdered it it is really a lot of difficult issue but I wanted to ask you one thing Dennis um, I know when we work with a military family sometimes we would work with TAPS one of the issues that comes up is whether they were killed in the line of duty. I was wondering if the people who died of the result of 9-11 of an illness, mm -hmm. do they get the same, you know, energy around that? Yeah, because there's a hierarchy in the military, yeah. which I never knew until I was starting to do these shows. And it's like if you die in combat, it's, it's kind of more prestigious. I know that sounds strange. Right. And then if you die of an illness or in a car accident in a different way, it's different, and you know because they, yes, Michelle's daughter was in the Navy and died in a car accident. Right. So you may have seen some of that, yes. the hierarchy piece. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Well, you will have some of the, those types of situations play out in, in law enforcement, that's all. So we have some officers that are killed uh, just in driving the vehicles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it may be a single car accident because of the road or whatever, but they, it's in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't resonate the same with families if someone's life was taken by exactly. a bullet mm -hmm. as opposed to someone in the car accident. Yeah. So you have a lot of that that goes on. But you have to try to, to assess that and treat everyone the same. They get the same funeral mm -hmm. and they get the same uh, respect uh, along the way from uh, their fellow men. But um, we do have a situation, as we, we, we were alluding to, that those subsequent post-9-11 deaths are still in a discussion. Mm -hmm. So those families have yet to receive the same uh, feeling that they're being um, uh, helped, mm -hmm. you know, because of right now it's still in, in court. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're still awaiting to hear. And, that, and those are numbers, are, like I said, are very, very large. And what you're saying is the people that have died because of the ramifications of the health, it, 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 what happened down at, nine, at the ground zero and how they had health problems. Right. So yeah. we have the police department locally will treat that as a line of duty injury, mm -hmm. line of duty death. We have the state that will almost, that will treat that as a line of duty death, but federally, they've not, there's no answer on that as of yet. Right. So we're waiting and we have a lot of issues, you know, court cases and things going on to try to get because that Because they didn't approval. just die of cancer or lung cancer, Correct. they died as a, as a result of 9-11. That's right. Yeah. So that's what we, you know, when those decisions are made, then we'll see a whole lot of numbers mm -hmm. change. So uh, how often do your groups meet? We meet a, once a month, mm -hmm. and we try to have uh, things outside of our meetings, uh, like, you know, like we went and had a bowling night uh, last month. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the things just to keep people active and keep them, you know. Right. So I'm thinking that the compassionate other. friends, say I were in Staten Island and you were meeting once a month and it was as a child a sibling or a grandchild, which is their area, sweet spot rather than a spouse. But if you were a parent, see, I don't think the parents, particularly adult parents, uh, you know, parents of adult kids really get the kind of support that they need oftentimes. I know mm -hmm. with the 9 11, the widows got it, mm -hmm. you know, the support. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the parents. Yeah. So I'm just thinking this uh, Compassionate Friends is a great adjunct to you, they too. Can go to both. And, and I say believe to so. go to yeah. both. Yeah. I, I, I believe so. I think that, they, and we talked off, offline yeah. and mm -hmm. know that, you know, we have to do some connecting. Uh, yeah. And I believe that that's going to be very helpful for most of us. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's all about community now. And, you know, with the internet and everything coming up, I mean, uh, you know, getting this kind of support is kind of an, an amazing thing. And I like to say, I do it at Compassionate Friends chapter, and one of the things down the road a ways, it really doesn't matter how your child died, it means, or your grandchild, or your sibling, it doesn't matter if they died of a drug overdose, you know, if they were murdered, you know, however they died, they died, if they committed suicide. You know, it's so hard for families, they're so caught up, I think, initially in how they died. But eventually, it's when you move on, it, it's that you miss them. And, and, and you focus now more on how they lived. Yeah, yes. exactly. It's how they lived and, and the wonderful memories and that they have. And I know that the Staten Island chapter meets twice a month, right? Right. And uh, if people want to find you, they just go on to your website, Staten Island. Yeah, our contact number's on there. Mm -hmm. 
And they can just look on the CompassionateFriends.org website and find out when chapters are going. And then they can go to your site. And yes, you, meet, a, you meet once a month. Yeah, we meet once a month. And uh, we have this, uh, MetroNYCops.org. They mm -hmm. can find us. They can find us on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, connect with us at any point. And you can, uh, they can also go to your national site. They can go to the national and site and chapters. see chapters all over the country. Yeah, yeah. And how about getting involved in both of them? Well, you know. we're, we're a charity, we're a New York State charity, and we love the support because it takes money to do all of the things that we mm -hmm. do. We send our uh, survivors over to our national um, events, and we train police departments in the city, oh. and then and also in Long Island. And all of the things that we do cost money, and we the donations nationally, and of course on our local end mm -hmm. is something that we look for, and they can find that on our website also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. So uh, what kind of events have you got coming up? We have a great event coming up. Uh, our second annual gala is okay. coming up at, and it's going to be uh, um, in uh, June 18th and it's going My to birthday. be at Oh, Ooh, well then you you're go. coming. <laughs> Chateau, Chateaubriand and, and, and Old Country Road. It's going to be a real nice. fancy thing and we, we honor families of the officers that oh. have recently been, uh, been killed in wow, the line of duty. So we are going to be honored and they're getting ready to be put on the wall, the National Wall Memorial in in, the, in May. Now and where is that? That's in Washington DC. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every year there, there's a, a big thing, Police Week, National Police Week that'll take place in, in May and they will honor those families by putting their officers names on the wall oh, uh, during uh, the, the month of May. And those that are from our particular area, we will honor those families at our gala. Oh, that's great. That's great. So that's now, really how great. many people have you got this year? I hate to say it, but uh, approximately that? five right now. Five wow. families that we yeah. put on. We have uh, uh, pretty much uh, four NYPD officers were killed in the line of duty this year. And that's been uh, 2014. Okay, we're only it's February. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we'll talk about 2000. Okay. And 14. Okay. So those wow. in, during 2014, okay. we lost four, and then we lost one from Tribal Bridge and Tunnel. Wow. Right. Right. So. We, so what about you guys? What have you got coming up for the Compassionate Friends? We do a lot of things in our group. You know, uh, on the website we have an events page. We have a, a balloon launch coming yeah, up in June. Balloon launch, which is a brunch in a catering hall, which is very nice. Right. We all send balloons up with messages to our children, and then we have. Um, a picnic. Uh, picnic. We have a walk. We have a dinner, and then of course the candle lighting. Wow. Yeah. And you have national conference, right? Well, uh, of course. <laughs> and tell us about that. Well, uh, I personally, I, I love the, the conference. I. Um, it's coming up in in it's, Texas. It's coming up in Texas. And Heidi, what's the date? July tenth through twelfth. Yep. In Dallas, Texas. And throw in something for the siblings. That's another thing that you can do. Yeah. And you know, Dennis yeah. does that They're too. Great. You yeah. Siblings the siblings. Too. yeah, we have a group yeah. with the siblings. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying when you don't have your group running. That's I love, right. I love, that yeah, both, I love that both Cops and Compassionate Friends thinks about the siblings because yes. it is such an unacknowledged and overlooked loss. And I, I lost my brother, and it's why I do the work I do today. So, yes, at the uh, National Conference, there is a big sibling component. Lots of workshops and lots of activities for the siblings. And that'll be what date? July 10th through 12th. And the reason I know that is because my brother's birthday is July 11th. So I will be there honoring him wow. in Dallas, That's Texas. That's great. Yep, Dallas, Texas. Get on your cowboy boots, people. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so Dennis, if you had some advice for somebody who lost uh, somebody in the police and you know this is program will go all over the world, what would your advice be to somebody? Well, my advice would be to stay on course and, and, and really reach out to people, you know, reach out to like-minded uh, people that uh, uh, really uh, understand what you're going through. And uh, the Concerns of Police Survivors is there. We're a national organization, so you'll definitely be able to find a chapter close by to you. And we're nationalcops.org on the Internet. Now, what are my chances of getting my kids in a summer activity if I've lost a police officer? 
Easy, very easy. Ah, easy, huh? Yes, very easy. Yeah, do you know where the activities are located for sure? In Missouri. We oh. have camps in Missouri that uh, everyone goes to every year. Now, do you have any scholarships to go? We do or? scholarships on, at all the chapter levels, and, and uh, so all the chapters that have, uh, have chapters will uh, do scholarships. That's and great. then there are all other organizations that give uh, scholarships out to the law enforcement families. So, so those we connect are, those with them are also. school scholarships yes. too. And then you have summer scholarships for if I want to send my kid to the Oh, camp. absolutely. The, all of the camps are free. Oh, wow. So it's just to travel. Yeah. And we help with making sure anybody in our chapter that wants to go attends. Oh, what a nice idea. But That's they're all free. Yeah. And they look so fun. And they, oh, it is a lot of fun. They, they have a great time. They come back waiting to go next year. Yeah. Now tell me about the college scholarships. What if I got into Harvard? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to do a whole lot of work to make sure that we're raising enough funds to get you there. But uh, that's uh, something that, you know, again, each, each uh, we work along with a lot of the organizations that are existing in the state that are ready to, you know, give scholarships out and we make sure that we help to provide information and paperwork and help them make sure that they can do what they can do to get these kids into college. Awesome. You're a, a great resource. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's so wonderful and I'd never heard of it before now and it's amazing what you're doing and like you said, you're financially providing all these opportunities yeah. for people too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Really great. Mm -hmm. And it never ends. We will stay with these families because the families continue to move continue to grow they you know and I love the fact that you guys have made this connection yes. it's absolutely amazing I and I, I want to yes. thank you for being on Fabulous. the show and I hope this connection just goes far yes yeah. and thanks too. again and thanks for watching this show today I'm your host Dr. Gloria Horsley with my co-host Dr. Heidi Horsley and the show is brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation in partnership with the Elizabeth Kubler-Ross Foundation Heidi and I always like to say if you've lost hope lean on ours till you find your own and God bless